What's up watchers, it's Jordan That Blonde Girl, and today I'm talking design. For those of you who don't know, I'm a communication major, but I minor in multimedia. What's multimedia? Well, it means that I don't specialize in one kind of creation. Jack of all trades, master of none, still better than a master of one if I do say so myself. I've taken filming classes, editing classes, typography classes, web design classes, and I'm even taking graphic design this semester. While you can usually catch me complaining about my design projects on my Instagram stories, shameless plug, I was really excited to be in charge of all the visuals for my podcast. Now, as you might know, I vlogged the pre-production for everything having to do with the podcast, and I actually ended up with a lot of clips from designing the cover. So rather than let the clips just sit there, I thought I would use them and show the internet how I designed my podcast cover. First things first, I sat down with my friend and partner, Christina, to decide what our project aesthetic would be. Since we were pretty new at this, we needed some sort of guide. So to help guide us, we followed Karen Cavett's video, How to Redesign Your YouTube Channel. Link in the doohickey. In the video, Karen walks through how she came up with her design elements, how she put those elements together, and how to create a cohesive look across platforms. We followed her process, creating vision boards and even sketching out our ideas. We also decided that we wanted to try a bullet journal, sort of messy, handwritten kind of look. And that a sunflower would be our logo. In her video, Karen talked about how she had done a bunch of different designs and tried a bunch of different ways, but since we had sketched out our ideas, I had a better sense of what I wanted to do, so I only stuck to really one design. By the way, both ways, completely valid. Once we had all of our elements, including a sunflower sketch from Christina, it was up to me to put it together and make something cool. The first thing I had to do was actually color our logo. This is sunflower that Christina drew to be kind of like our logo. Now it's my job to take that logo and digitize it in order to make it part of our cover art. It's actually something really funny. Christina is good at drawing things. She has a very good, you know, sense of proportion, which is something that I don't have, but I'm really good at coloring and that's something that she can't do. So this is how we're kind of splitting up the work and you know creating this logo the only thing that's going to be kind of difficult is actually getting it into a digital platform um, because i'm not entirely sure if how i can color it how i actually work with coloring will translate very well to a podcast cover i'm excited to get started but i think first i need to scan this and make sure that we have an original copy and just see how exactly i can set up you know this this digital file and see if i can get what i'm imagining my head we'll see first things first gotta scan this um we'll see this is only you know option one uh that i i decided to plug into indesign just to see how it would look but i think now the next step would be for me to try to create a, like a colored version because i think it it'll be really cool just to have you know something colored also this orange is like an attempt at a color i don't think we'll actually end up be using it i guess now i need to figure out how to color that digitally question mark? I don't know, I'll find a tutorial on YouTube. Wow, scary lighting. I wanted to stop messing around with the digital files because I thought I was gonna get like too far into it and I just would go too far and be like, no, I didn't actually mean to do that and just whatever, I just wanted to stop. But I wanted to test out this technique that I found online. Now, um, these are actually called watercolor pencils and apparently they actually do like a watercolor effect. And uh, Christine and I really kind of like the, the sort of messy artsy style, so I thought I'd try it out because I've never actually done, you know, watercolor with these. Um, so I printed out uh, a scan. This isn't the original. I printed out a scan and I attempted to color it um, with a basic idea of what this would look like, kind of like where the colors might go a little bit. And I'm going to see how well that technique works and see if I have to color it digitally because I'm not sure it'll get the same sort of effect that we're looking for. Um, so I thought I would try this before stopping for the night. Let's try this. So this will be water, and then I guess I'll start with one of the petals. Oh, oh, that, that's yellow. I just, I just painted something. Oh my gosh, like, that's kind of cool. I mean, it didn't do anything with, like, with the orange, but I'm not mad at it. Let's, let's just keep going. Let's see what it looks, see what it looks like. Oh, wow. This is, okay. This is cool. Again, not really drawing in much of the orange, but I feel like that's just because I really made it really heavy around just the inner circle. So this is a good a good test for me to know that I need to build that color up a little more if I actually want to do this, which so far it's looking pretty cool. Um, if I look at it, you know, in normal light tomorrow, we'll see how it actually works out. But so far I'm I'm enjoying this. 
If anything, I think I found a new hobby. Okay, so I lied about stopping. Instead, I moved to my bed and I continued to work with uh, the like kind of sketchy outline that I made because I thought, what if I just kind of went with that and I didn't color it at all? Like, what would that change? And I've actually created a cover that I'm not too mad at but would definitely need to workshop a little more. This is kind of option one, I guess. Um, I went off our main idea, which was to have, you know, the title front and center and then uh, have our logo kind of scattered throughout. Originally, I was planning for a brighter background color, like an orange or maybe a, a nice blue, but to go with this sort of like sketchy version of our logo that I've made, taking it down and making it like a nice brown color has been really interesting. Now, this is pretty close to kind of like what we were thinking of to begin with. I think this still looks like really put together and not really like how Christina and I are. Still, I think that this is an interesting design and I might be able to work off of it. So it'll be really interesting to see if my watercolor idea works out. If not, I hope I can figure out how to color stuff digitally for the first time. You can't tell I'm really intimidated by that. So we'll check in there. Now I'm gonna stop fiddling because if I go much further with this, I feel like I'm gonna hate it more. So I'll leave it like this come back to this tomorrow so okay last night i was able to create this which isn't bad but it's not exactly what we're going for either but now i know i can create you know a lot darker colors if i wanted to like i can go a lot darker turns out watercolor pencils actually work who would have thunk it um so yeah i'm gonna re-attempt because i think this is pretty close to what Christine and I were envisioning, um, so I'm going to keep going down this path and see what I managed to make on this second attempt here. I'm also probably going to continue to belt out Dear Evan Hansen while doing so, so be thankful that I am not recording that. Okay, I'm not a totally artsy person, but I really like what I've managed to do with the shading of these leaves, and even if it isn't totally, like, realistic, I really like the look of it to the point where I'm afraid to start in on the middle here with my brown because I feel like I'm gonna mess it up. I, I've gone in a good direction, I feel like, because I feel like this is a really good start to the coloring aspect. And now I'm trying to look at reference photos and, and like how other people have made to see how I should shade the middle because I think just making it, you know, a hard brown, like it's kind of a basic thing just to make it a one dark circle. And I don't know if I wanna go that basic but i'm just kind of debating here but so far yeah i was i was really proud like this is some shading that i think looks really cool i also think it looks better that i didn't outline everything because that's what i did on the last one and it doesn't look bad but it makes it more consistent aesthetically to have it not outlined at least to start with artist update i've now moved on to rent just kind of was uh, singing about the tango maureen here in a minute i don't know what it is about musicals but i'm really being creative with them in the background right now so the brown shading worked i very much enjoyed this i actually scanned this version of it because i didn't i'm just scared of like doing something like adding water and like messing it all up um so i scanned this version of it and so i have uh, this immortalized so now I can take my brush and apply water and hopefully get the shading of this with the kind of more seamless colors like there's not as much like line like you can definitely tell like there's lines heading up here which is like not bad but I kind of want to see if I can make it a little smoother already this looks more realistic than this because of the shading. And so I don't wanna mess this up, but in case we do, I have backups. So let's see if I mess it up. Y'all, I did an art. I figured it out and I feel really great about it. It looks not exactly how I imagined it, but still good, which is how you wanna view your art. It's not always gonna be like how you, you see it in your mind's eye because your skills and your brain sometimes don't match up like with this but let's see how cool it looks like let's look let's look let's look so this is the original scan of just you know the colored pencils it's a little darker from uh scanning and some how the photos get transferred but then also here is how the watercolor transferred which is a lot more vibrant like you can look at the yellow and just be like wow that's just like a lot more you know stark a lot more saturated there um there are these weird lines 
going down the paper, and that is because it's watercolor, and I don't have watercolor paper that you can print on, but all in all, I still think that looks pretty cool. And now it's just a matter of trying to create um, a cover that fits this aesthetic style. Um, maybe this and also using some of that, but I also now have to go and put these in Photoshop and do an isolation like I did with um, with the original, where is it? This one. This, I went and made the background all transparent and whatnot, and so I have to go now and do this with all those other logos, so that way I can actually input it into a cover and not have it be like a square. That's gonna be super interesting. I actually can't wait, I'm really jazzed right now. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm super jazzed. So right now I have about three different styles of logo. They all have the same sunflower pattern, but one has absolutely no color. One is colored with colored pencils, and the last one is colored with the watercolor effect. Um, I've isolated all of them, so they're just the sunflower and the background is transparent. So I took the cover art file that I made last night, the one that was like kind of brown with like a sketch with the with the sketchy logo, and I duplicated it and then opened up that copy and I created a color version of it. And this is a little bit closer to what Christine and I were first envisioning, um, but I'm keeping the other one just to see if that's something that we'd wanna go with instead. But I actually really enjoy this color version because it is very similar to what I was thinking when we first were thinking of cover designs. So yeah, you can tell like if I go and open up the one I made last night. So yeah, you can see that it's virtually the same design just with some color and uh, a little bit of reworking of where the um, flowers are now that their color is playing into it. Me personally, I'm kind of leaning towards this one just to like, I feel like this matches our personality more, but we'll see how we both interpret that. I also want to create like another version of this and export it with the, um, the one that I made with these, where are they at? There they are. I want to redo it because this is the watercolor version of it, which again, like looks fine um, and I do like it more than this, not to say that this isn't bad and that I won't hold on to it, but I think this fits us more and I think and I think the one that I colored in with a uh, pencil will just look a little bit more kind of how we want it and kind of the style that we're going for. So I'm going to go in and, you know, relink all of these um these photo portraits and just see what that would look like and export a different version of this one here. I might also rework this title just a little bit just to give us, you know, two options of this as well. But so far I am in fact leaning towards our color one here. The title needed to be big enough to be legible but small enough that it didn't dominate the entire cover. And it needed to be visually interesting enough to catch someone's eye, but simple enough that it wouldn't overwhelm them. It also needed to be between 1400 pixels and 3k pixels squared in order to display properly, especially if you're going for the Apple Podcast app. After weighing these things against each other and getting some input from Christina, I fiddled with a little bit more of the small things so small that I didn't even record them or bother to remember them, really. As a sort of finishing touch, I wanted to add more depth to the image. My inspiration from this comes from the covers of Dear Hank and John and Delete This. Both covers have elements of kind of hidden designs. And Dear Hank and John, it's the Nerdfighter logo, and on Delete This it has these little starburst lines that make it a little bit closer to a 3D object and give it more dimension. Lucky for me, the font that we had chosen came with a bunch of confetti packets. I picked one that I liked and inverted the colors so that way it would match our aesthetic. So I, I brought in reinforcements because I don't know Photoshop all that much and we were trying to do a thing. Ooh. There we go. That, hey, there we go. I forgot. Flipping masks were the best thing in the world. Yes. <laughs> I always did that when I made uh, images inside text. Okay, so my brother figured out how to do it. Regardless, I did a little more probably unnecessary tweaking and suddenly I had a podcast cover. Yeah, it's probably not the best cover in the world, but I wanted to show the internet that you don't have to have a lot of design experience in order to make something that you're proud of. Using what skills you have, along with some creative Googling, is more than enough to get you there, as long as you're resourceful. Here's a reminder that you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram, but before you leave to follow me on any of those platforms, you should subscribe to me here on YouTube. I've included links to those, along with a link to my podcast, down in the doohickey. And that's it for this week. Remember, everybody, I love you all. Laters.